Hey everybody, it's Chris. I am back again quickly. Uh, <laughs> uh, it seems I was able to salvage some of the video I was working on yesterday, so I thought I would get that out at the very least so that you have something to work with. It's not all of what I wanted to do. Uh, I was working on uh, more kit bashing specifically with the uh, set that we're building. You'll see in the video there's a set and once I get this uh, fixed for good I will make another video that goes into how I kit bash that set together. Uh, but this video will focus in specifically on cameras, camera movement, how to use multiple virtual cameras and put them on a timeline with the machine and uh, switch between them and blend between them which is actually really important and something that you should be experimenting with quite a bit so getting this out now means you can play around and uh, create as many uh, cameras as you want and all of that and play with it while you're waiting for the next video so I thought at the very least we would get that out uh, so you can keep going uh, forward towards your unity based masterpiece so that is what is about to play and uh, I hope you find it educational if you have any questions of course put them in the comments and I will get back to you guys. So without further ado, here's what I could salvage. All right, let's just jump in here. As you can see, we have our set, which is the corridor for the facility. And if you look at the facility here, it's made of a couple of modules, uh, the sci-fi door that animates open, and a box. The reason for the box is that this model, for whatever reason, was not designed with uh, the outside in mind. So if you remove this box, you'll see we can see straight through into the interior of the model, which means that light and shadows can pass through into the interior of the model, uh, which we don't want because it's supposed to be a solid structure. So to fix that, we have our box, uh, which is super straightforward. It's just a bunch of cubes that we've built uh, with Pro Builder, which I will go over in a, uh, the next video. Uh, it's a super easy tool to use to prototype and build things like this in Unity. So now let's just make a couple of changes. We're going to pull the game view down to the sidebar here so we can see it while we are making changes in uh, the scene view. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about flipping back and forth. As you can see I drag the camera and in real time the game view changes. So. Uh, the next thing we need to do is start adding our virtual cameras. Uh, so before we do that, in case you don't have uh, this stuff installed, all you have to do is go to the package manager and look for uh, Timeline and Cinemachine. These are the two main packages we'll be using in this video. So install them if you don't have them. Assuming you do, we can move on to creating our virtual cameras. Uh, so we're just going to get into a good place where we can start seeing everything and then we create our first virtual camera so as you can see it kind of resets the position of the camera so we're just going to drag this around to find where we want it to live so uh, i think that looks pretty good and uh, a little bit higher there good all right so now we just need to go and create our second virtual camera so again same thing as before new virtual camera and we reposition it uh, we're going to do it closer so we can have that kind of low angled up view of the door uh, that you saw in the trailer that I produced, uh, which basically is just moving this uh, close to the door and then changing the X and Y rotations so that it is on the side angled to the right and looking up. So once we get the position correct for that, uh, we can move on to the next camera which is right now so go ahead and go and create that third virtual camera so this one we're gonna pull way back because it's gonna be more of a wide view of our facility uh, so we just put that here um, that looks pretty good I think right there the problem of course now is that it's pretty close to this camera which is virtual camera one uh, as you can see here we need to hit solo on this camera to get to it because now that there are a number of virtual cameras it uh, kind of gets confused. So we're just going to reposition this so it's more of a straight on shot. Uh, I think that's pretty good. And then we'll just run through each one of these and show them. So cam one, we hit solo, we can see it. Uh, cam two, hit solo, you can see it. And then cam three. Okay, so now that we have all of our cams set up, we need to find, we need to create a way to control those cameras. And that is uh, with timeline and cinema machine. So go ahead and create an empty object. We're gonna name this camera control. And then down here where you see timeline, uh, if you don't have this, you can just go up to window sequencing and timeline 
Uh, you can put it wherever you want, but I like it in the bottom. So go ahead and create uh, a timeline, Cam name it whatever you want. Uh, we're going to take this Cam 1, and let's just go ahead and rename these so that they make a bit more sense. We're going to name them Cam 1, Cam 2, and Cam 3. You can name these whatever you want. This is just what I do uh, to keep things organized. So now drag Cam 1 into the timeline. You can do control track or cinema machine track. You want cinema machine track so that we can blend and switch between each camera. So now we have camera one in there. We're going to drop camera two. Uh, there's not enough room, so use your scroll wheel to make that a little bigger, and then drop cam three in. We now have all three cameras in our track, but we need to tell it to switch on the main camera. So we just add that. And now, if you scrub through, you'll see in that game preview down there on the right here that it switches between each camera. Uh, that's cool and all but there is a little bit more we can do. So let's go ahead and pull this game view back up here so we can see a big view and we will hit play to preview it. So doors open, there's Jamie being all statuesque. Uh, and then we switch to this view of Jamie as he's peering into the darkness. And then we switch to the wide view in bottom left, which is cool and all, but some of these cameras are on screen way too long. So let us do a little bit of editing. So we go to the camera control and we find uh, what we want to do first. I think cam one is way too long, so we're going to drag that down to, I don't know, 180 probably. And then we bring cam two down and we make this way shorter because this is just like a, it's a point of view kind of shot. So we want this to be just on screen for a little bit. So we drag that down and then we bring cam three back. And now when we scrub through uh, and hit play, you can see that it's much livelier and faster and more of what we want. Uh, so this is if you want like a traditional Hollywood style of uh, switching between cameras, but Cinemachine lets you do blending of cameras, which is kind of cool. It's not really something I like doing, but it might be good for your animation. As you can see, I just dragged that over into the other clip and it blends between them. So we're going to do the same thing with camera three. And so now we have blending uh, between each camera. This is, it can be cool, uh, especially on the right project. So as you can see, we play through here and cam one and we zoom to camera two and then we zoom out to camera three and it gives you an interesting movement. Uh, one thing to know is that the length right here, if you see like camera three, the length of that bar is how long that camera is on screen. So the longer the bar, the longer it's gonna stick on that camera view. And uh, that is it for this. It's actually really simple. It seems like it's way more complicated than it is, uh, but that is working with cameras in Cinema Machine. All right, uh, that's it. Like I said, short and sweet because that's all I could salvage, but it is pretty important and will give you a leg up in working with Cinema Machine cameras, and that is kind of the really the heart of what you're doing. Working with Cinema Machine when it comes to animating the characters and moving them around the set, and then using the cameras to actually film what you're doing in the two the meat and potatoes, if you will, of this process. So that is how you handle the cameras. The next video, we're gonna go over creating the set and how we're gonna use Cinemachine and Timeline to animate all of the characters and get them around the set so we can have something dynamic instead of just Jamie standing at the door peering into uh, the black nothingness of space. So yeah, uh, again, sorry that this isn't exactly what I wanted, but it's something and that ain't nothing. Yeah, that's it for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. We'll hold it against you, especially on this video because it's the best I could do. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe if you're not. Hit the notification icon so you know when the next video is coming out because YouTube sucks, sucks at letting you know when my videos come out. So if you want to know, you need that notification icon and really that's not even a guarantee. So uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video when I have a fully working computer and uh, we can get back on track. So have a great day.